Hey guys, so giving you a quick update on this uh, the historic house we're working on here in Birmingham. Um, we got a got it cleaned out so far. Got the the yard cleaned up, as you can see over here in the corner. Used to be a big old tree that was basically um, overhanging the side of the roof right here. That has been cut down. Um, we're still doing a little bit of cleanup. Still have one more dumpster. I pulled out about three dumpster worth of um, trash out of this house and and debris and and stuff that we that had been demoed from the previous owner so today the roofers are starting to work on the house I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of what it looks like um, cleaned up a little bit better but just to give you a quick tip um, right now the roofers are working on this house and what my roofer suggested which is um, something that I'm, uh, I hadn't thought about before was that he's gonna tear off all the shingles on this roof it's about three layers worth of shingles that are on the roof right now so what he suggested to do is to go ahead and tear off all the shingles, repair any rotten wood, rafters, any of the framing stuff, and also the, um, the sheathing um, material that's on it, get all that fixed. And instead of putting felt, um, regular, uh, you know, 30 pound felt or whatever, back on the roof, there's a there's material called synthetic felt that's more expensive, but it's extremely durable. And so he said, you know, go ahead and put that back on there right now because I actually can't afford to fix the entire roof right now. Um, it's gonna cost me a little bit more money than I wanna spend because I have a bunch of money tied up in some other products I'm trying to finish up. So just to get this protected and stop the water from coming in, he said go ahead and, and fix all the, the rotten material underneath, put synthetic felt on it, and that could stay on there for a year and, and it won't weather and, and leak. And then you can come back and put the roof on. Of course, I won't have it um, uh, w without shingles for a year, but it'll give me, you know, a month or two or three to be able to um, get the, the the money I need to go ahead and get the inside of the the, the house fixed. Because really, what I want to do is get the structure um, leveled and get the walls rebuilt before he puts any more weight back on top of this roof. Um, I'll show you when I get up to the top floor exactly what I I'd like to do in order to be able to make sure this is properly um, built built back the, 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 the proper way and make sure it's structurally sound before he puts any more weight on the roof. So that's kind of the game plan right now. I'll give you a quick walkthrough, kind of show you what it looks like, and then, um, you know, continue to give you updates as we work on this house. All right, here we go. As you can see, um, it's looking a lot better. There was a lot of debris that they pulled out of this this house, and uh, the guys that did clean up did a pretty good job. Um, make sure you guys get properly permitted, especially in some of these historic neighborhoods that you know people are gonna be keeping an eye on. Um, always definitely want to. It's it's best to to do that. It's, it's only a couple hundred bucks. So um, right here is the permit for the roof. And um, we'll get a permit for the structure inside when we start on that. All right, here we go. So first thing when you walk in, there's still a lot of damage. This is actually caused from the dormer that's been um, leaking for quite a while. So as you can see, there's still a lot of um, damage on to the floor, but also to the wall. I hope you guys can get a kind of a view of that. There's um. Let me back up here and give you a better view. So this is the bathroom above, and right above that bathroom is the dormer. Um, it has a huge hole in it. Uh, the side of the dormer is actually what, what has broken off and allowed it to sag in and push into the, the actual roof structure. So the walls are bad. It's taken a lot of water there, as you can see from a lot of the white spots. That um, material has gotten soaked and, and, and had some mold on it. So the thing is, you know, in order to be able to rebuild that dormer back um, and carry that weight and also put the weight of the of the shingles back on there. I really want to get all this rebuilt, get it braced back up from underneath all the way up to the second story before I um, rebuild the roof. And the other, the other reason why you want to do that is because once they start pushing on this and pushing it back up, try to get the floors level and get all the walls back level, you could tear your shingles. 
even if, you know, slight movement could shift them enough to where you're causing a leak up there. And so that's, that's the last thing you want to do is put a new roof on and then jack the house up and tear your shingles. So I'm going to go ahead and get the synthetic felt on um, today. And uh, then we'll try to work on the structure in here, see how quickly we can get that done if cash um, allows. And then we'll throw the shingles back on and then it might be a while before I can get the electrical, plumbing, HVAC, all the things that you need to do um, in the walls before you start, you know, doing flooring and drywall and all those other good things. So as you can see, it's a lot, it looks a lot different. The floors actually aren't in terrible, terrible shape. Like, you know, of course, you've got a huge section here at the front that's bad, but... Um, I don't know exactly what's going to occur once um, my contractor comes in and, and tells me what I need to do in order to be able to get this house leveled back up. You can almost see a bow right there. So this wall, um, and that's going to eventually be a bedroom. This wall right here is kind of pushing in because you can even see a bow right, right in the middle of that room. So this wall needs to go back up in the air. Um, and also these stairs are um, shifted to one side to, to the, to the right-hand side when you're viewing this. So a lot of structure underneath there needs to be shored up in the, in the basement um, but definitely looks a lot better now that a lot of the debris and trash is um, pulled out of there and one quick change that I think I'm gonna do um, to this to the previous video that I suggested that I, I talked about the uh, floor plan is that I was gonna put a door here, but now I'm considering not putting a door here and just and just reframing this as one blank wall. To, it'll kind of make the living room a little bit bigger. Um, I was hoping that this living room was bigger than what it was when I, when I, after I cleaned out all the trash, it wasn't as big as I had anticipated. So I think to give me a little bit more room, I might just frame this wall out and not put a door here, but keep the door over here. So that would, my thinking at least right now is that that, that would can remain the uh, entrance to the bedroom and instead of putting a bathroom right there um i would go ahead and so uh, as i was saying basically i'm thinking about turning this area that's framed out for the uh, door right now into a closet so basically you'd have a standard um i think six foot closet right in this this section where the door is um, that way you can walk into the bedroom from that side, come in here, you'd have your closet right there. Um, and that would, again, would, would allow the, 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 um, a better use of the living room instead of having a door blocking it here that you can't put any, anything in front. You can kind of allow that space to be used maybe for a buffet table or something else if you want to make the living room just a little bit bigger. So, again, we're going to walk through this area and this will lead into bathroom that was originally the butler's pantry um i think eventually i might i might redo this entire back section because this is actually an addition that they put on the house so i may have this uh, completely gutted and rebuilt um put a little bit different roofing system to get a little bit higher roof back here so instead of having the closet here that was the original plan and blocking the stairs i'm still going to block the stairs but i think i want to put the half bath or the little um powder room right where this doorway is. So basically, if you look from this direction, um, again, these two columns will come down because they don't really um, frame the stairs that you, that you see when you first walk into the house very well. So I wanna take those down to kind of open up the space a little more and maybe do something different to frame those stairs in. But right here, originally, I'd said right here would be the um, powder room. Now I'm going to shift the powder room back to this um, back area. Just have it right in the back, right, right back here, so you can't walk into the bathroom through that door. That'll be blocked off, and it'll kind of allow me maybe to keep some of the architectural detail on these stairs, possibly. Um, I think I still want to um, change these stairs to more more modern look, but um, we'll see. So uh, I'll give you a quick peek of the lounge area. So again. I'm anticipating that I'll just use this for a lounge area over here where the original kitchen was. We're going to keep that same area, just have a different layout, take down this wall right here. Um, so that would be open, this whole space would be opened up. And then let's take a quick peek upstairs. And 
here are the guys working on the roof. They're going to tear off the back side of the roof this morning and um, start there and then work their way towards the front. So um, one of the main differences you'll see up here, this whole bathroom area was full of trash last time. They'd had a cast iron tub that was sitting right here. You can kind of see the um, indentation or the, the area where it sat. So underneath those penny tiles, they used to have a um, cast iron tub right here. And they, was, they were able to take that out of there. What I didn't realize and I should have known with these older homes is that this floor actually is concrete. Um, a lot of times these older homes, they would concrete the uh, bathroom floor and then um, lay the tile on. And you can actually see underneath um, this uh, tub, the original remnants of the original tile that's still under there. So that was a blessing for us and that all this right here is pretty much all tied together with metal lath. That's, that's, in, that's inside of that concrete and that's really what's holding this floor all together is um, the, 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 the work that people did back in the day to really rebuild, to really build these houses um, stoutly. So this floor actually is holding really well. There are a bunch of guys in here hauling this stuff out and this thing didn't move one bit. So it's really the rot that's underneath here that's allowed this thing to sag. If that hadn't rotted at all, even with the roof raining on this thing, it wouldn't have done a whole lot of damage to the floor. So. Um, that's going to be a beast to chip out of here, but, you know, they'll just have to go at it little by little to break this, um, concrete out of here and, and hopefully, um, get it out without getting any damage. I think what they'll have to do is just brace it underneath. They'll probably brace up the floor underneath and then just go at it little by little and, and, and rip it out of here when they read it, when they rebuild it. All right. Um, another quick look at one of the bedrooms. Again, you see a huge amount of damage here where there's a hole in the ceiling. Um, hopefully that won't take a lot to fix that, but there is. This room is taking on a lot of water, so pretty much this room is going to have to be completely gutted, um, which would be which is the best thing to do. You want to go ahead and just rip all this out. Um, take out all the rotten joists and just reframe that floor properly. Got this beautiful window seat now, as you can see there. So this room, this bedroom is going to be really, really nice when it gets done. And you've got the uh, closet over here, a nice large closet. It's probably about a six foot closet. Um, let me back up here, kind of give you a better view. So you've got a nice large closet here and this, bed, this bedroom is probably about a 15 by 14 bedroom so a pretty good size bedroom um, nice large windows upstairs so you can have a little bit of a view um, over here got a sister bedroom so both of these bedrooms here are going to basically use that bathroom that's going to be redone right there it's going to be a nice large bathroom with, with uh, either two vanities next to each other um, or separate depending on, the, on what layout works best and then um, a shower or, or possibly a, a tub with a, with a um, shower surround and then over here you've got the master bedroom definitely going to try to keep this um, fireplace, fireplace detail in some fashion again I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to finish that out but we're going to go ahead and just keep that in the bedroom got the beautiful bay window over here again um, gives you a nice Nice view of the neighborhood, kind of, you know, kind of cool to have uh, a view up here when you just relax in your bedroom. And I'm not sure if you guys can give me some suggestions of what to do with this back section. I need to be able to get a closet and a bathroom um, in this master. So one of the tricky things I'm trying to figure out is that with this back room here, you've got all these beautiful windows but they pretty much border the entire corner of this room. So, <laughs> they're really going at it there with the roofing. Um, so, you know, to use this as a, as a, as a um, closet area and as a bathroom, it's got a lot of space. It's probably about 14 by 12 or 15 by 12, so it's huge. But you've got all these windows to deal with, so I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I can lay this out in a fashion that'll, you know, make it efficient and not cramp the space and make it um, make the layout really awkward, awkward looking. 
So if you guys have any suggestions, I would definitely appreciate you kind of giving me some ideas of what you think I could do to be able to get um, a closet and a bathroom back here. And what I, one of the things that I'd like to do in the bathroom is to have uh, a shower, a decent sized shower, at least maybe 42 inches, and then a, a soaking tub. Um, so that would be my preference. If not, then I'll just have a really nice large shower, um, possibly. All right, any questions, um, you know, you guys feel free to comment and I'll keep you updated as we progress on this house. Thank you.